NASA is in the process of designing its next generation spacecraft, Orion, uh, which will be able to take astronauts to far off destinations like an asteroid and eventually one day Mars. Orion itself is gearing up for its first flight into space, Exploration Flight Test 1. That test is uh, going to be taking place in the fall of this year, 2014. But this week we're also doing a lot of prep work and one important test to get ready for that. Here to tell us a little bit more is Mike Serafin, one of NASA's flight directors and, and someone who's involved pretty uh, heavily in the test this week. And that test is underway recovery test. I don't know if it has a number. Is it one or are we just going to call it underway recovery test? It is uh, just the underway recovery okay. test. So we are... Uh Performing a test is a, a joint partnership with the United States Navy, uh, Lockheed Martin, and uh, NASA. Uh, this week, uh, the uh, crew of the USS San Diego, a Navy vessel uh, out of the uh, Port of San Diego, have sailed out into the uh, Pacific off the coast of California, and they are going to demonstrate the ability to recover Orion this week. And uh, me and my team are going to be here in Mission Control, and we're going to demonstrate the, uh, the handover process of the uh, Orion capsule. Uh, here in Mission Control, we're responsible for the Orion spacecraft from liftoff to splashdown and, and final power down. And uh, we're going to hand over the spacecraft to the recovery team. Orion, like Apollo, is designed to land on water and not on land. Mm -hmm. uh, so we need a, a ship to go out there and recover it. And uh, through this joint agreement, we are uh, going to go demonstrate that this week and make sure that we're ready to go for the uh, exploration flight test one this fall. And so what are some of the things that the recovery teams are going to be testing responsible for out there tomorrow? Yeah, so um, we are using a, uh, a new design of ship that did not uh, exist in the Apollo era. It's called a well deck ship. Um, so mm -hmm. the uh, Orion capsule being larger than uh, the Apollo capsule, uh, there was some concern about uh, using a crane over the side of the ship to basically uh, raise it over uh, off, off the water. Uh, onto the deck of the ship. So folks went off and assessed uh, various options and uh, we looked at a well deck ship uh, and uh, that was uh, the the uh, plan that we're going to try out here on EFT-1. Uh, well deck is uh, basically an area within the uh, belly of the ship that they can flood and uh, they'll open a stern gate uh, which is much like the tailgate on a pickup truck and uh, mm -hmm. tow the Orion capsule in uh, into the well deck and then close the uh, stern gate and then drain the uh, the well deck and lowering the Orion capsule onto a uh, recovery cradle. So they're going to demonstrate that capability. Uh, they're also going to demonstrate the uh, ability to spot and recover things that have been jettisoned off of the Orion capsule during the final uh, descent and landing phase like the uh, forward bay cover and parachutes and uh, go retrieve some of those as engineering test articles. So uh, it's, it's a large integrated operation and mm -hmm. uh, we haven't done this for quite a while. We certainly haven't done it with this uh, class of ship uh, or with a uh, capsule this large. So we're going to uh, check it out and demonstrate it and make sure we're ready to go. And Mike, you'll be the flight director in the room right down the hall from here leading the team. What are you guys going to be doing in there? Right. So uh, my team, uh, it's a small team of uh, roughly uh, two dozen folks that are going to be here in Mission Control on flight day, uh, responsible for Orion from liftoff to splashdown. Uh, are going to be monitoring the health and status of Orion during the mission. Uh, and if we see anything off nominal that the spacecraft is not designed to handle on its own, we're going to uh, do what we say, uh, uh, send commands to the uh, spacecraft or mm -hmm. issue computerized instructions to it to uh, safe things like a propellant leak or, or issues that uh, could potentially occur uh, and make sure that the spacecraft is safe to handle uh, by the recovery team. Um, those... Uh, Folks on board the uh, the Navy vessel are going to put themselves in harm's way, and I want to I want to make sure that me and my team tell them everything that we know about it, so that they're safe and can take precautionary measures if necessary. And so to switch gears a little bit, we haven't really had to train to handle a new vehicle. Well, aside from the cargo vehicles recently, but not really a new crew crew vehicle in a long time. What's the training been like to get ready for Orion to get the flight control team ready to handle this new craft? Yeah. Um, I'll admit that I was a little bit spoiled uh, as a uh, space shuttle flight controller <laughs> and then a uh, shuttle flight director and then uh, coming over here uh, doing international space station operations. I always had a, uh, a baseline to work off of. 
and it was largely a sustaining operation uh, where you could use the previous mission or the previous flight and use that to uh, to delta your work off of. So you never started from scratch. But with a brand mm -hmm. new program, uh, like we're flying here on Orion, uh, you are starting from scratch. Uh, so yeah. all of the capabilities that we're using in mission control, uh, all the products, all of the tools, all the software, all the communication capabilities, um, we're having to uh, develop and test and check out from scratch. Uh, we're obviously leveraging a lot of the capabilities that we had uh, during the space shuttle area and uh, have during the currently uh, here in Mission Control as part of the uh, space station program uh, to uh, minimize costs and overhead associated with that. But uh, because Orion talks differently uh, via its uh, telemetry stream and because it has uh, different capabilities on board uh, we've got to develop a lot of new things from scratch and we're in the process of testing and checking all that out right now and uh, again that's to make sure that we're ready to go and fly this fall team team getting excited for this fall yeah the uh, the team's excited um I, uh, I came on board the Orion program uh, about two years ago, and uh, when I was introduced to the team, I was really excited because all of the folks that I'm working with, uh, I've worked with in the past uh, during my space shuttle career. Uh, so they are a, a veteran team uh, that we are uh, using to, uh, to fly uh, the Orion spacecraft here out of mission control. Uh, very capable, very dedicated, and uh, also a very small team, as I said before. Um, and uh, just the sheer volume of work, we're having to uh, to work really hard, really fast. Mm -hmm. um, a development program always has uh, unexpected events or surprises that come up. Uh, software doesn't always work as designed, and we're having to uh, uh, tweak things here on the ground as well as uh, with some based on some uh, flight software updates that we're getting uh, through our avionics and software counterparts and things that we learn in testing. Uh, we always learn about design features that um, that we have to modify our, mm -hmm. our our planned operation or tools around and and the team's doing a really good job adapting to that and working really hard well, i'm sure they'll be ready okay well again the underway recovery test taking place tomorrow on thursday february 20th an important recovery uh, of orion from the water joint with the u.s navy all of that in preparation for the upcoming exploration flight test one later this year mike thanks for joining me really looking forward to that flight yeah thanks for joining us for mission control